Hey all you storyline people out there. Today I want to take a look at this gamified board game-like template I created for eLearning Locker, and how you can put it together yourself. The game itself is not too complicated, and honestly, you want to be a little careful about too much complexity with your audience. Less frustration equals happier e-learning. So you roll the dice, or die rather, and the piece moves around the board randomly. And when it lands on a circle, a question comes up. If you get it right, you get the points. So this game is about skill and knowledge and also, you know, a little bit of randomness. Which means you can play it several times and keep trying for a better score. Before I move on, if you do like this video, please subscribe. And if you're an eLearning Locker member, you can download this template to use in your own projects. Okay, so here we are in Articulate Storyline. Now I built this background snake thing here in uh, Adobe Illustrator and brought that in as a ping file. You can build your own board any way you want. For instance, I built this in Storyline. This is a little bit simpler, but easier to build in Storyline. You can also build this in something like Photoshop or PowerPoint, which has you know a little bit more flexibility in how you can put shapes together, uh, and you can import that into Storyline. So we need to create a few components to this game, and then we need to make them all work together. First, rolling the die here, and you'll see I created this in Storylines, just some shapes, and there's some states here for each side of the die, and let's follow what happens when I click the die. I have a trigger that adjusts a variable. I have here, it's called random die. And that's just a number variable, and it changes it to a number between one and six using the random trigger number function. So now the variable has a random number to it. If we scroll up here a bit, we'll see I have a number of triggers for changing the state of the die. If we look at one, change the state of rectangle 5, which is the die, should have named that something a little bit uh, clearer, to state 1. And see I have all the states here, uh, but to state 1 when, or on the condition, when that variable uh, random die equals 1. So I'm just going to jump to a state depending on what uh, random number I'm on. And you can see all the triggers I have here. If the variable is randomly 3, then set the state to 3, and so on. Then as you can see, I just tell it to play through an animation I made uh, with a motion path. And I tell it to orient the shape to the path. So it looks like it's kind of spinning a little bit. Now we need to move the piece itself on the board. You can see I have a bunch of motion paths uh, here on this piece. I need to be able to go this way, go halfway around this, this uh, curve here, then the other half of the curve. Uh, I have to go kind of back the other way here in this direction, and then around this curve here at the bottom, uh, halfway and halfway again, and then back up that direction, you know. So um, there are several moves here I need to have uh, motion pass for. When you do this, make sure you set each path to relative start point, so it moves from where it is, from where it basically uh, left off, rather than always from the start point. So it looks like it just keeps moving and moving and moving forward. Drawing these motion paths was probably the most complex part because, you know, you just had to be pretty dead on as far as where you wanted the pieces to be. I, I can't draw it and then go back and tweak the actual shape a little bit. It's kind of like in stone at that point. And so what I did was I drew the line, saw where it ended up. If it was a little bit off, I would redraw a new line on top of the old one but make that little tweak to get it in, in a better place. Then I could delete the old motion path that wasn't quite right. So I need to connect the random die number here to the movement of the piece. So I thought I could create a countdown, and every time it counts down, it moves the piece on the correct motion path uh, based on the square it's on and, you know, where it's moving to. So if I roll a 3, it sets a variable to 3, and it knows it's on square 1, so it says, okay, I'm on square 1, so I'm going to move the piece using the forward motion path. Then, when it's done moving, it changes the countdown variable from 3 to 2 and says, I'm going to use the motion path again because I'm on square 2, then again counts down to 1, then 0, and on 0 I stop everything and it doesn't move anymore. So if you look at the triggers, when I click the die, it sets die countdown equal to, you know, that random number, and it starts a layer called Move Maker when the die animation completes. I do this because I don't want the piece on the board to start moving before the die stops rolling, which of course is more like real life. So what's so great about this move maker layer? You'll notice the most important thing is knowing what position you're on on the board. So every time this piece moves on the board, I need to increase a variable called current position by one, so I always know where I'm at. Then I just call the motion path depending on where I'm at. Now I could have just called the motion path here, 
but decided to actually show a layer and put the motion path trigger in that layer. I thought I might want to add, you know, I don't know, some additional trigger or something based on the move. Ultimately, I didn't, uh, and so this is now an extra step. But anyway, at the end of the move maker layer, it hides the current move maker layer, and then it'll show the move maker layer again if that die countdown variable is greater than zero. Basically, I'm creating a loop until I get down to zero. Oh, and I also want to subtract one from the die countdown variable because I'm counting down. And that's pretty much how we move this piece across the board. Then I put just a bunch of circles on different blocks. And I have triggers that show question slides if the user lands on a specific square. Uh, really, or more realistically, if my variable called current position is a certain number, uh, if it's four, I'll say, okay, show, uh, you know, question one if I land on current position equals four. And I've got a little point system here too. If you get an answer correct, just add some points to a variable. Some of the additional tricks I had to pull here involve timing. So much of this is about timing because you want it to feel realistic. For instance, I have a little motion path here that runs, and I have the question come up when that motion path stops, because I didn't want the question popping up before the piece finished moving on the board. In a lot of this stuff I do, timing is one of the most important things, whether I'm animating things around or whatever it is. There's so much complexity in, in that and, and a lot of this like little stuff, just because I want the project to have a good user experience. I don't want the user thinking about the ways the functionality could be better. I just want them to play the game, answer the questions, and try to do a good job. I want them to enjoy this project. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you can apply this to your own gamified e-learning projects. Again, please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. If you're an e-learning locker member, you can download this template today. And happy e-learning.